six common traps to avoid when you're preparing for quant, when you're preparing the quant section. And so some of these are exam traps, some of these are preparation traps. Most of these link to exams. So I'm going to go one by one. First one, problem versus you. It's a very interesting way of framing it, which is basically saying, look, uh, I'm the king of speed time distance. This question is in speed time distance. How can I not solve it? I'm the king of this. It turns out that's a slightly tricky question. You've missed one detail. When you spend two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, one the timer goes on. And you're feeling increasingly miserable because this is your core territory. You're hurt. And so pick your battles. Pick your battles. And so sometimes it's not worth it. You might be the king of a domain. It's not falling in place that day. Shed your ego aside. Find your marks elsewhere. Knowing a formula is not understanding the concept. And so the questions on harmonic mean. And so harmonic mean of A and B is 2AB by A plus B. And the question gets unlocked if you're thinking, look, P is the harmonic mean of Q and R. If you can think of it in process and then say, look, that means Q, P, R are harmonic progression. That means 1 by Q, 1 by P, 1 by R is an arithmetic progression. That means this question answers itself. And so sometimes just getting consumed in a formula is very misleading. Know the formula, of course know the formula. It's a competitive exam, but know the context. Know how it can be tweaked, how it can be reinterpreted, how it can be, how there can be a variant of that formula. And also know what is the context for that formula. Because sometimes formulae work in very narrow context and then you're getting carried away and plugging it in any which place, left, right and center. Can't do that. Fix them in those contexts. And so it helped to know formulae, but it's super important to know the fundas. Poor time management. Um, as I said, look, getting consumed in one topic, in one question from your favorite topic, that can happen. Getting carried away uh, in a paper without realizing the idea of time management. Can happen. Fine. One couple of rules to keep in mind. Have rules for leaving questions, not for selecting questions. I have lots of rules for leaving questions. If it's very long, I leave. If there's too many excess and noise, I leave. If it has reciprocals, I leave. I don't like that. And so these are my leave question territories without without batting an eyelid. I leave those. And so speed time distance, I leave. Uh, uh, one of those. Uh, Topics I don't enjoy, I come back and do it, but I don't want to do it on, on the first round. And this is my list. I have rules for leaving, not for selecting. When in doubt, leave. Or should I do this question, leave. And so, so the, the couple of frameworks like that are very useful for time management inside a time management while preparing. Don't get consumed in a topic. If there's something blocking you, let it go, come back to it later on. Sometimes percentage is a bugbear topic, that's in fallen place. But you do ratios, you do simple interest, compound interest, you do averages. When you come back to percentages, it seems super easy. Come back later on, don't let one thing block you. Improper reading of the questions has happened a million times for me. The question goes on and says, look, find the number of students is what you find. And the question says, how many of them were boys? Two thirds were boys. I found the answer is 36. I mark 36. The answer is 24. I've solved everything. The natural variable is the natural variable. I found that. I stuck it in. And then I realized that that's not what being asked. And then I make a mistake. So, so it, it helps to pause, to gather your thoughts about units, about topics, about fundas, about detail, everything in in in. Spend that extra five seconds grabbing that question. Silly errors, this happen all the time. Sometimes it's inexplicable. You'll, you'll analyze a paper and you'll think like, look, I'm super confident I marked 42. But the answer choice is saying I marked 38. This must be wrong. Entire technology is wrong. Uh, the provider is uh, cheating me. They're taking marks away from me. There's every chance that you thought you were marking 42 and you ended up marking something else. And can happen, uh, but when silly errors happen, you have to. You have, it is by definition silly errors happen when you can't really explain the error. You cannot remember 
how in this wide world you could have put 7 into 8 is 54 you know it's 56 they put 54 on that day it can happen because of pressure stress fatigue anything um, analyze them also and sometimes we're running too fast and making those errors you're walking into trap after trap or trying to be too quick so taking a deep breath pausing and then and then rebooting frequently helps fatigue plays a big role i'm not saying you can eliminate this i've been taking this exam for 14 years now continuously my first time i took 25 years ago and i make silly errors all the time there isn't a mock or a paper where i have not done silly error and so it happens if it is half a percent one percent of questions it's fine the 25 percent of the questions you are attempting just digging you're asking for trouble which means you have to slow down you have to pause you have to reflect you have to worry about fatigue think about it process it solutions will come Build your eye for detail, this is linked to reading the question well. Building your eye for detail is linked to rigor. It is linked to knowing um, fundas, not just formulae. So lots of times we will cancel x minus 1 on both sides of an equation, which is fine, except when you do that, you're, you're eliminating the solution that x equal to 1. You should be like, okay, I need to be careful. If I'm cancelling, that means what I'm cancelling can be 0. You need to remember that. Sometimes questions will say positive integers. Sometimes they'll say non-negative integers. Sometimes they'll say distinct natural numbers. These are all different definitions. And if you're not careful, you'll walk into solve the entire question and earn yourself a minus one because you've missed out the detail. So build an eye. So slowing down while reading the question, pausing, processing, gathering it. Uh, looking out for the details and these days when you read a question uh, when you take more and more marks when you read a question and he says positive real numbers you're looking for the word distinct by the time you finish it you already said look this is distinct or not distinct okay I process that and then you carry on so that introducing the pause and really internalizing the I for detail is important doesn't come overnight doesn't come to in a foolproof 100% manner but work on these consciously diligently so that you get slightly better and then a little bit more better uh, don't shoot for perfection sometimes uh, then we feel miserable about wherever we are and I, I hate it and uh, I'm a confidence bunny I do better when I feel better so sometimes I stay in cuckoo land where I'm not realistic but hey better that than being in a funk I would rather be delusional than um, unhappy. Uh, that's my poison. For some of you, the mental makeup could be different. Uh, but don't set an impossible target that make you feel miserable about yourself. And keep that also in mind. Best wishes.